Thanks for watching the start of a new season of Angry Video Game Nerd. And this first segment is like a lost episode from 2006. So <laughs> I hope you enjoy really going back to the past before we move forward. So much fun. But first, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN shields the data you send over the internet from peering eyes by wrapping it in a protective bubble called a virtual private network. Then your data is sent through a secure tunnel to its destination. ExpressVPN is also the highest rated VPN available, which brings me comfort knowing my information is safe. Recently, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors, had its 35th anniversary. I wanted to watch it again, mostly for the Dawkins song, but it's not on Netflix. Well, with ExpressVPN, I was in luck. I just changed my location to Australia, and the movie showed up instantly in beautiful high definition. Find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by going to expressvpn.com slash cinemassacre, or by clicking the link in the description below. Well, you just saw how much Ninja Turtles sucked. So now I want to show you a different ninja game, The Last Ninja. You might think it might kind of be like Ninja Gaiden or uh, uh, maybe Shadow the Ninja or uh, Wrath of the Black Manta or any of the other million ninja games on NES. But no, this one exists on a whole other plane of bullshit. First of all, good luck getting used to the controls. You might say it's innovative that the game designers try to do a three-dimensional angle but these controls are so awkward. I mean, what the hell? Fighting enemies is even worse. You have to be perfectly lined up to hit them. I also love how the energy meters are spirals. I guess they were trying to be different. Well, it's different, all right. So already, you've come to a dead end. So what do you do? Take a guess. You have to punch this button, which opens a secret hatch on the screen you were just at. So you have to go back. I also don't understand why the bottom has a picture of the Statue of Liberty coming out the ninja's ear. What's the point? And you know what pisses me off? When you knock down an enemy, they get up all over again. So you gotta fight them all over again. So you're running around a park beating up random people including a juggling clown who looks like he came from a black and white silent film. You can't jump in the water because water kills you. So I think you're supposed to jump on this boat. Ugh, oh, let's try again. Ugh, oh, fuck! I mean, you gotta have patience to get used to the controls. But how can you have patience when you're in a hurry? What a piece of shit. I love how it tells you you have only zero lives left. That's great. In general, I never understood games where you can have zero lives. If you're down to your last life, it should say one life. But I guess that would make too much sense. I also love how the scoreboard has Bird and Ernie, Barney and Fred, and Stan and Oliver, as in Laurel and Hardy. Let me ask a question. Who were the target audience for this game? Kids. Kids who liked ninjas, dinosaurs, robots, and uh, G.I. Joe? Do you think any of these kids knew Laurel and fucking Hardy? Anyway, let's get on this boat. God damn! Get on there! Mm, fuck! Get on there! This is completely useless! I have no chance of getting on there! How did this happen? Ah! Fuck! It's impossible! I don't have the patience for this crap. I mean, what the hell were they thinking with this garbage? The real tragedy is that nobody remembers how bad these games were. After so much time passes, you only remember the good aspects. This game came out in 91. At the time of recording this video, that was 15 years ago. And nerd, if you followed my instructions, by the time you're watching this DVD, another 15 years have passed. Close enough. 
So let this DVD serve as a personal reminder, should you one day forget, Last Ninja is a steaming pile of goat shit. I was being too hard on it. It couldn't have been that bad. And I know what you're thinking. It couldn't have been that bad. But you need to play it one more time. Sure. And then you must finally release this episode. Does that mean the last one's still 200? Do it, nerd. Upload it on uh, whatever replaces YouTube. Still YouTube. And then you'll warn the world of this awful, putrid horridness. There's plenty of worse things going on in the world, but okay. Don't fail me. You must continue to be the angry Nintendo nerd. Well, now I'm just the video game nerd. I'm not angry anymore. I can now appreciate these games. Every game is made under a set of circumstances. You may never know what the game designers were going through at the time. Here, let's give it a fair shot. Luckily, the cartridge survived the 2000s era Apple live type explosion. Funny, it says game of the year. This would have been 91. Um, what other games came out that year? Better than all those? Well, that's quite a claim, but uh, let's give it a try. I can get further this time. Maybe I'll even beat Burden Ernie's score. All right, so let me get used to the controls again. This isn't so bad. Oh, wait, oh my. Oh boy, well, it, it's not too bad. I mean, it's it's a little bad. It's, it's, ooh. Oh boy. I will say it was an ambitious attempt. You don't see too many NES games try out an isometric angle like this, and even fewer that are successful. Snake, Rattle, and Roll is a better example. Still somewhat awkward, but it's much easier to control. Whenever you stop moving, that's where you stop. But in Last Ninja, it seems you're stuck to a larger grid. Anytime you try to stop or interact with anything, whether it's picking up an item, hitting a switch, or fighting an enemy, you have to jerk yourself around till you land in the precise spot. Since you can only move in diagonals, the D-pad becomes a detriment. The game uses a controller that only has four directions, up, down, left, and right, yet those are the only four directions you can't go! Even the manual says, don't be confused by the unique 3D technology. But hey, it was pretty advanced for the time. I mean, this was before Mario 64. But hang on, the Commodore 64 version is actually smoother. Yeah! It helps using a joystick, but seems the movements are much more fluid. Uh, except I can't stop moonwalking for some reason. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to play the Commodore version for very long because I couldn't pick up a key. Tried the fire buttons, hit every button on the physical keyboard, plus tried a ROM and used every button on the virtual keyboard. But nothing would pick up that key. Strange thing, this is actually Last Ninja 2 in the Commodore 64 series. That's right, I said series. So the version we got on the NES was actually Last Ninja 2, but it was called The Last Ninja. Now we're getting chronologically confused. So anyway, back to the NES version. This ninja is probably the least stealthy ninja I've ever seen. He's running around a park in broad daylight, making an ass of himself. Last Ninja. Should be called the worst ninja. It's a shame all the other ones died, so he's the only one we have left. You know, most of the enemies just run back and forth. They don't attack you until you start a fight, so really, this ninja's just going around being a bully. Come to think of it, the 80s didn't usually portray ninjas in their traditional Japanese sense. Look at Ninja 3, The Domination, where he's terrorizing a golf course. Just ask my generation what a ninja is. First thing that comes to mind is turtles wearing bandanas. <laughs> This ninja is really something. He can't touch grass, dies in water, and he stops to buy a burger at a burger stand. <laughs> now that's great. I just love the idea that the ninja is running around with a burger in his pocket. The funny thing is nobody is there at the stand selling the burger. It's just sitting there unattended all by itself. Who would trust that? This ninja can hardly even defeat what appears to be the park security guard. <laughs> What's he trying to stop me from? Using the restroom? Come on, you fuck! Oh, come on. Come on. 
Come on. Well, damn. After all that work, I might as well take a piss. Okay, tried going in the men's room, but it's not working. So I guess the bathrooms are off limits. Wait a minute. You can go in the ladies' room? And he doesn't open the door. He passes through the door. So my assumption would be this is a glitch. But no, there's a second ladies' room on the other side of the level that you can also go in. So it's intentional. The game makes you enter the ladies' room. Yeah, on top of being a bully, this ninja's a creep. The game makes you into a ninja pervert. <sighs> To select the weapons, you'd think hitting select would be sufficient, but no. You have to hold select and hit B. Few games pull that shit. The only other one that comes to mind is Dick Tracy with the first aid. Now that you have the weapon, it hardly does anything. I mean, scratch that. It does nothing. Look! Passes right through him, like a ghost! There's another game where you try to beat people with a stick and it doesn't work. You know what I'm talking about. Jekyll and Hyde. But there's one major difference. In Jekyll and Hyde, you can kill the bees. But in this game, not even the bees. Not even the fucking bees. I'm beginning to think this game might genuinely suck. Now that dreaded boat. Let's give it a try. A real try. A real, heartfelt, honest to God, ball busting motherfucking try. Ugh. Ugh. Fuck. Mmm. Ah! I've thought of numerous possibilities. Maybe I'm not supposed to go this way. Maybe there's another way to get through the water. Maybe there's an item I missed. But all my investigation and deductions point me to the idea that I must jump on this boat. I've jumped from every conceivable launching point, I've timed my trajectory with the boat in multiple ways, and nothing works. And worse, you only get a few seconds to think about it. Once the boat passes, you'd think another boat will come by. But no, you missed it, it's gone, so leave the screen, come back and try again, asshole. It has to be possible. It has to be! I wonder how Ernie did it. I've tried landing on the edge of the boat, I've tried landing dead center, but where oh where is that magic little pixel, that invisible bullseye of super strict programming? It would be more possible to slingshot and hit a bird's turd intercepting it in mid-air, altering its trajectory to land into the asshole of a horse on a passing truck. Right as it's about to shit. This thing is no joke, unless it is a joke. How could they have not been aware how unplayable this is? It's an actual published game, sold in stores, with the official Nintendo seal of quality! How could something like this slip by? <gasps> oh my god! I almost landed on it! So it is possible. I was just about to give up, but that little tease is gonna keep me going and keep pissing away hours of my life! <sighs> fuck! 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 <gasps> I made it! I made it! No! Ah! Come on, come on, come on! Just all right, right on the edge, right here. Fuck! Ah! I did it! I finally did it! <sighs> but now what? This victory has brought me an all new sense of paranoia. How much worse could this game get? Well, behold, you made it on the boat. Well, now try it with no boat, dickwad! I guess you just gotta make the jump, right? Nope. So I went back, and the only other path I see leads to water. Now we've already established water kills you, right? 
so there certainly couldn't be anything up there. But in the good words of Doc Brown, I figured, what the hell. <laughs> A leap of faith. Classic. And now you have boat number two, as if one wasn't enough. By the way, you gotta love how they flipped the sprite. The first boat said Nina, I think, and this one's written backwards. So they were too lazy to redo it. They just flipped the sprite. So anyway, you slap the boat to make it move, race to the next screen, and now you gotta jump on it. Dookie! Come on, come on, fuck! Come on, come on, fuck! Done! I beat it! I beat level one. If you've made it this far, you already know what you're in for. This is not going to be your ordinary shitty game. You're not just going to get the usual tedious button mashing, the unfair pitfalls, and cryptic conundrums. It's not going to be the usual cheap shots, the dirty, below-the-belt bullshit. No! This time, my friend, you're heading into the land of motherfuck. So I came to three doorways. You may be guessing this is all going to turn into some big, confusing maze. So let's try door number one. Dead. Door number three. Dead. What killed me? At least have the courtesy to show what was in the door. Because now it's driving me nuts. Was there a pit of venomous snakes back there? A maniac with a chainsaw? Or Kevin McAllister with a bunch of paint cans? What the fuck killed me? And what kind of game am I playing? There's no skill here. It's just luck. It's like saying pick a hand. That's not a game. That's the lowest, most basic caveman version of a game. So you go in the middle door. And what comes next? Another set of doors. Oh, damn. Oh, you see what I have to deal with here? So now it's all about trial and error, memorizing the path. I can't even compare this to any shit that I know. It would be sort of like playing Dragon's Lair if it were crunched up and stuffed inside deadly towers. This is like the ultimate amalgamation of all the fiendish, barbaric games I've ever dealt with. Sometimes you're supposed to go through the ground, like these sewer drains. How are you supposed to know that? Most of the time, you just walk by thinking it's part of the graphics. And to open them, you gotta stand on the precise spot. Come on! Same thing with the sewer lid. You just gotta fuck about till it opens. Not to mention, why the sewers? What is it about Nintendo games and sewers? What is it about ninja games? What is it about ninjas and sewers? The only thing more cliche would be if there were alligators in the sewers. There's alligators in the sewers. The alligator can't be defeated using any ordinary means. So check this out. Here's what they make you do. You have to take a bottle that you found on the level before and use it on this torch in the previous room so you can ignite it and throw it in the fucking gator's face. What psycho thought to program this? Hey, who just leaves a Molotov cocktail in the middle of a sidewalk? Have you ever come across one in your daily routine? You know, just a fucking bottle of gasoline and a rag sitting on a sidewalk as you're strolling by to the coffee shop? Who fucking throws Molotov cocktails at gators? There's no other way a ninja could get past a gator other than fucking incinerating it? I mean, there's the gator just burning alive! Who does that? The next level starts and I pick up something on the ground. What's this supposed to be? A MasterCard? Oh, kick fucking ass. I got a MasterCard. Life is kind of cool sometimes. By the way, I've now officially beaten Ernie's score. I'm guessing Ernie gave up at the Gator. In the last couple stages, I've come to realize this game forces you to think with a ninja's perspective. So here's some of the ninja wisdom I've learned from playing this game. 
One may see food as nourishment and survival, but one who puts a chicken drumstick in a box, turns it poisonous green, and feeds it to a panther will ensure one's survival in the road ahead. An open mind leads to open doors. An open mind to think of pushing against the desk. Take small steps towards your goals. Otherwise, a giant fan will blow you to your doom. One must become the master of their environment. When a helicopter comes by dangling a ladder, don't think that's the target. Instead, jump off the fucking roof! Don't take the obvious route. Instead, a random window may be a window of opportunity. The path less traveled is less traveled because a rack of wine bottles are deadly to the touch. See things with your own mind. Is the picture a vase with roses or the Grateful Dead skeleton? Be formless, shapeless, like piss. Piss into a toilet bowl, it becomes the toilet bowl. It pervades the air, consumes all matter around it. It can spray or drip or splash. Be piss, my friend. But everything in this game was just a warm up. Because what's up next is one of the most infuriating boss fights ever. You come to a room with a pentagram, you enter a code to open a safe, you pick an orb spawning a ghost ninja who strikes you immediately. I found no way to avoid the first blow. He will hit you and drain your health no matter what. So this ghost ninja can't be killed conventionally. If you knock him down, he'll get back up. What you need to do is drop his ass in the middle of the pentagram. But that's not all. The five candles all need to be lit. But that's easier said than done. You can't knock him down first and then start lighting the candles because he gets back up too soon. And any time he gets back up, all the candles get reset. So you try lighting the candles first, right? But how are you going to do that with this guy all over you? He drains all your health in three hits. Not to mention the wicked controls. Trying to stop on the exact pixel to light the candles is a task in itself. You have to be perfect with the controls and somehow miraculously light the candles while avoiding this guy at the same time. You gotta at least light a couple candles before knocking him down. Then you just might have enough time to light the remaining three. <sighs> Got him down. Oh no, he's not fully inside the pentagram. I hope it counts. Please count. Please, I hope it counts. Come on, come on. Fuck! So close, so close! Ah! Fuck you! Ah, what, now he's throwing shurikens all of a sudden? Okay, two candles lit. Got him in the center. Light the rest. That's four. Five. Yes! I beat it! Oh, boy. Oh, the only thing left that this shitty game would need is a shitty end screen. Wait a minute, why are the words ninja and relax flashing colors? Is that a subliminal message? Is it trying to tell us something? Hmm, but I still don't see any typos. It needs one, just one. We hope you've enjoyed battling the roughest, toughest, meanest, hardest ninja bad guys in the West and would like thank you for playing our game. Would like thank you? They did it! It's complete! A full home run shit fest! After 200 episodes, I never thought I'd see anything so perfectly fucked! This is a major code red on the shit scale! It sits right on there with Jekyll and Hyde! In fact, I think it might even be worse than Jekyll and Hyde! This might be the worst NES game I ever played, and I'm never revisiting this one! I'd rather slurp the liquefied bowels of a diuretic yeti after it's gorged itself on the stinking dead carcass of a rotten warthog! As long as there still exists more shitty games, I will continue to be the angry video game nerd. Say, nerd. Yes. I just got out of the bathtub and, uh, happened to notice you've been playing Last Ninja on NES. Is that right, nerd? Yes, that's right. I also happened to notice you beat the game, huh? I did. Well, that's real swell, nerd. You know, I happened to notice something else. Something about that scoreboard, nerd. What? 
I noticed your score is above my score, nerd. Is that right? It is. Because I just wanted to check, nerd, and make sure my eyes are seen correctly. Your name is on the top. Correct. So, uh, that means you beat my high score, huh? Yeah. That okay with you? Absolutely, nerd. I think it's great you beat my score. I do. I really do. I bet that makes you feel real great about yourself. That you beat good old Ernie's score. Congratulations to you, nerd. Thanks. You know what I really like? How you beat my score twice. And the first time, you know what you wrote? Say it, nerd. What does that spell? It says ass. Hmm, ass. Is that what it says, nerd? Can you repeat that for me one more time? Ass! So if ass is higher than my name, nerd, that means I'm below ass, meaning I'm less than shit? Is that how I'm supposed to feel, nerd? You know, Bert's score is higher than yours. Fuck Bert! I already took care of him. You don't have to worry about that. Look, just get out of here! Oh, that's how it is, nerd? You just want to beat my high score and tell me to get the fuck out? Fuck you, you fucking piece of shit! Take that, bitch! Uh. Fuck you, motherfucker, you fucking piece of shit! I'll fucking kill you! You want to beat my score? Uh. Well, beat this, motherfucker! You feel real good about yourself, huh? Well, how's this feel? Uh. 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 Oh, you're one sick fuck, nerd.